So just quickly before the video begins, I actually prepared this video, but due to a safe issue, I lost the script and the prepared animations. So this video will be a bit more improvised. Sorry for the long delay on the MC script course. Hello and welcome to the next section of the MC script course. MC script is my own programming language or data pack development in Minecraft. And this course should teach you the fundamentals of the language. In the fifth section, we'll take a look at booleans, variables, as well as ray casting. And we'll also wrap up our project and finish this course. So let's start directly. Let's take a look at the boolean first. And the boolean value is kind of like a switch. It can be either on or off. So it can just have two states. And in Minecraft, you would usually implement this as a tag. So tag add as add is true. And this would mean we have a true state. And then we can check on the entity if the entity has the specific tag or not. But that this can get very confusing in long term. So in MC script, we have the bool keyword and like constants, you give it a name. So if is true, and you also have to set it to a default value. So let's set this to true. And MC script just takes this here and it will generate one entity that holds all the Boolean values as tags and determines the state. What you can also do is after the name, you can input a selector and that will set and that will add the is true tag to at s. So if you take a look at the main.mc function, we can see this just translates into a tag. And we can also easily check for that tag. We just say if is true and then we can execute something. I don't know, log true or something. And here as and here as well we can include our selector. And this will just check if this Boolean value is present on our selector. So now that we know about the Boolean, we actually want to do something with this. And you might remember from the beginning this pink wall here, and this should be a wall running wall. We can just come near it and we can run across the wall here. So we want a Boolean first that determines if the player is near a wall. So we say is wall at s equals false. And we'll also put this into the player function. And if is wall is true on at s, then we will set is wall at s to false again. And also before that, we just check if a block is under us. So if there is no block, we can set a new block. And this would be the barrier in our case. So you can't see that. So just set block barrier. And every tick, we also want to clear these barriers as, as well. So we just say fill in a four by four area around the player, the barriers to air. So now we determined what should happen when the is wall is true, but we actually have to trigger it. So to detect if a block is near us, we use a similar method to this one here. We will just check around the player in this cross movement here if there is this pink block and if there is a pink block we set the value to true well that sounds simple but it is actually a bit more complicated because you have to do it for each and every position here i copy it in here you can see this is literally just a execute and it checks for every possible block around the player and just adds our is wall tag and this, of course, also affects our boolean here. Let's reload our game. And you can see now if we approach this wall here and we are one block away, we just stick to the wall. And you can also see the barrier block under the player here. The other thing I wanted to talk about are the variables. With this boolean value, you can already save values. It is really just restricted to these two values. And we also want to save numbers and we can do that with the variable before we use the variable anywhere we have to declare it and it's just bar and then again a name so let's name it test in the mc script load function you can see this scoreboard is automatically added and you don't have to deal with that 
And to this variable, you can assign a value. You can either do that here, so let's set this to 10, or you can also do that after it. You can now use the test everywhere in your file. And you can also always change it. And of course, you also have the selector here, so you can just like a Boolean, write the select after the variable name. And this will just set the variable of this selector to this value. And because it is a scoreboard, you can just run all the usual scoreboard operations on it. So for example, scoreboard play as get just works like normal. But MC script also adds something on top. So for example, if you want to increase the value by a given number, you can just use this operator here and let's increase it by one. If you want to increase it or decrease it by one, you can also use a short syntax, just test plus plus or minus minus. And we can also work with multiple values. So let's define a new variable here and let's set this to 16. And now we can say test should multiply with new. So that is this operator here. And you can also say test minus new. All of this is possible. And this will again be saved in the test variable. One other special thing is you can set the test value, for example, of at s to a command result. So we just say equals run column and then your command. So for example, a simple data get command. Why do we need it for our project? Well, our end goal is to move a boat by clicking on it. And somehow we have to detect this clicking. We just do that with a carrot on a stick because you can really easy right click it and it will also be registered as an item use event. So if we set scoreboard objectives add click for example and then we can set minecraft dot used dot carrot on a stick that way we can save the amount of clicks on a card on a stick in a scoreboard. This is done by Minecraft automatically. So let's define this scoreboard first. So we just say for click and you can now see this is added to the load.mc function. But it also has the type dummy and we want this Minecraft.used and that means and that means we have to define our scoreboard ourselves. And to prevent this auto generation of this scoreboard, we can just say no exclamation mark before the name and MC script will recognize that you define the scoreboard yourself. So let's do that in the load.mc function. And here we just copy in our command that we typed with the minecraft.used. And if you've done everything right, we can now set the sidebar to click. And if we click it, you can see this increases and we can use that to detect our click event. So let's go back into the main.amc script right in the bottom of our player function. And here we say the click on our selected entity. So every player in the world is bigger than zero. So if the player at least clicked once, and this is also a convenient way to implement the if here, you can use all kinds of comparison operators here. For example, two equal signs for equal, greater than, greater or equal, and so on. But we'll stick with this for now. And then we just want to call a function, test column click. We will, we will create this function in a minute. And we also want to reset our click variable again. So we just set it to zero again. Let's create a new script here, new file click.mc script and we just define the file here click and let's just log it for now so we can make sure that it works after we reloaded it you can see right away it's it is set to zero and when we click it you can see the console right here and it seems to work so we will split the section right here because the entire section turned out to be a bit more longer than I thought. So you can see the ray casting in the second part of this section later. I still hope you enjoyed this video and you can also check out all the other MC script videos right here or you might as well take a look at object D.